The Mutual Broadcasting System presents... Hello, I hope I haven't kept you waiting. Yes, this is the crime club. I'm the librarian. Cupid can be deadly. Yes, we have that story for you. Come right over. chair by the window. Comfortable? The manuscript is on this shelf. Here it is. Cupid can be deadly. The very unusual story of a dream that was made of the stuff that killed. Let's look at it under the reading lamp. The house in the hills of Westchester was big and rambling, like a medieval castle. And it was owned by the beautiful and temperamental Linda Barry, the celebrated actress. It was late Saturday night, and Paul Palmer, a Broadway columnist and one of the weekend guests, came quickly down the stairs. And as he made the right angle turn toward the library, he met Professor Caldwell, a psychologist, and another one of the guests. Oh, excuse me, Mr. Palmer. I didn't hear you coming. I walk on my toes. Have you seen Toby? Toby? Miss Randolph. Oh, yes. Uh, no, I haven't seen her in quite a while. Uh, where can that girl be? Have you looked in her room? Just now. <laughs> well, I'm going out for a drive with Sam Winslow. That phony private detective? Uh, I look around outside if I should see Miss Randolph. Yeah, tell her about me. Well, of course. In the meantime, you might ask Miss Barry. Where is she? In the library. Now, if you don't mind. I don't. Well, thank you. I asked Mr. Winslow to be ready in ten minutes. It's almost that now. Well, good luck, Mr. Palmer. <sighs> Why don't I stay home for a change? Paul. Uh, Linda, have you seen... Yes? What's the idea of the gun? You'll find out. Ah, the lady's mad. You've got no idea how mad, honey. You're sizzling. Don't be clever. I can't help it. Give me the gun. No. Give it to me. Uh, you can sizzle without it. You had no right to do that, Paul. Oh, uh-huh. it's done. Shall we go before an arbitration board? You, you keyhole peeper. <gasps> oh, a big one from my column. Linda Berry slaps a guest in her own house. And who was that guest? Your Broadway reporter. That ought to make me the toast of the world. You can go home now, anytime you want. Wait a minute. I haven't got time. We'll give it to you. Who is going to get that bullet? Take your hand off that door, Paul. Was it going to be your manager and half a heartthrob, Wally Brooks? Paul? Ah, then it was for the other half a heartthrob, Sam Winslow. No. You'll have to suck me again, honey. You're not leaving this room until... Oh, uh-huh. <laughs> the lady's smiling. <laughs> oh, you're such a fool. Don't tell the guys in the other papers. That bullet was for your girlfriend, Toby Randolph. <laughs> It's no use trying to talk me out of it, Wally. I'm going to get away from this place as soon as I can find Paul. All right, Toby, you want to go, you can go, but why? I don't like it here. Meaning me? (laughs) No. The house? No. Professor Caldwell's been lecturing you about the mine. He doesn't bother me, Wally. Then it must be on account of Sam Winslow. Well... That no good four-clutch around? He's not the reason, Wally. Oh? I can handle him. Hmm. Say, you're not running away from Linda, are you? I am. But why? I don't like the way she creeps up on me. That's too bad, honey. Huh? See what I mean? Walking in the garden, arm in arm. But a rosy picture. What's this all about, Linda? I'll bet you couldn't find such a beautiful setting anywhere. Even the moon is perfect tonight. What on earth are you talking about? Excuse me, Wally. I'm not sticking around to find out. You're sticking around, Toby. Hey! And you're going to find out how I really feel about you. Let go of my hair! Linda! You're not going to leave this place alive! Let go of her, Linda! You can't go of this, Wally! Break them, Linda, if you don't get your hands off. All right, all right, all right, all right, let go of me. No. Oh, thanks, Wally. Now I'll give her a sample of my no, brand. No, you don't. But she Toby. got me from behind. I don't care how she got you. But I want to know why. Well, Linda, why? 
Nobody's making a fool out of me. Nobody has to. What's that? That's enough. Just let me get at her. I'll show her how to pull hair. Stop so I... it. That goes for both of you. Listen, Wally, any time we need a referee... Shut up, Toby. And stand over by that tree. What about her? I'll take care of her. All right, Linda. How was Toby making a fool out of you? She wouldn't leave you alone. What? From the minute she got here with Paul, she's been trying to get her claws into you. And you left. Are you nuts? You didn't do a thing to stop her. I've been watching you. Both of you. You are nuts. It took you a long time to find out, Wally. Shut up, Toby. And stay that way until I got this thing settled. Now, Linda, since when do I have to sign the book every time I look at another girl? Mm-hmm. If you only look. There's nothing between Toby and me. She's got Paul, and from what I know, she's completely satisfied. Am I right, Toby? You're right. Yeah. But you are not completely satisfied with me, Linda, are you? I never said I wasn't. Well, you never had to. We've been engaged for exactly one year. How many protégés have you had in that year? Don't be low, dear. Five. And now it's that cheap, chiseling Sam Winslow, a private detective, the worst of the lot. I like to help people. Sure, but why are they always men? Coincidence. Oh, cut it out, will you? You're not talking to someone behind a bib? Darling, I didn't know you were jealous. I'm not. I've never said a thing to you. Third party here. Can we wait? No, I don't care who's listening. I'm fed up and I'm... Yes? Yes, and you can get yourself another manager, too. The less I see of you, the better. You're raving. Uh, We'll see about that. Come on, Toby. Let's find Paul and get out of here. I'm on our way. Just a minute, Wally. You're not walking out on me. Save your friend. I said you're not, dear. Listen. When there's any air to be given, I give it. And, Wally, I'm not giving you the air yet. You don't seem to get the idea, Linda. I happen to like you, darling. Enough to marry you tomorrow. <laughs> you either marry me tomorrow or you go to prison. But what's that? I'll repeat it for you. Slowly. What have you got up your sleeve? The ace of trumps, and it's been there for a long time. Okay. Show it. You're a thief, Wally. What? And I'm the only one who could keep you out of jail. You'd better start explaining, Linda. All right. If you don't mind the crowd. Well, let Toby hear it. You've been forging my name to checks. Have I? $70,000 worth. You know my signature, and you've been doing a perfect job. Where are those checks? You see them in court. I see them now. Hey. Where are they, Linda? Oh, stop it. You're twisting my arm. Come on, baby. Produce. You'll never get them, Wally. You could kill me, but you'll never get those checks. About time, Professor. What kept you? I didn't realize you were waiting, Mr. Winslow. You said ten minutes, didn't we? I've been sitting in this car for twenty. I'm sorry, but I met Mr. Palmer, and he was agitated about the disappearance of his lady friend, so I thought... tried some psychology. Well, not, not quite. I looked around for her just to be helpful. You're the type, aren't you? Well, yeah. Okay, let's go for that drive. Mr. Winslow, would you mind if we didn't? What's the idea? Well, it's rather late, and I can talk to you here just as well. Okay. It's about. Well, I think you know. Me and Linda? Yes. You don't approve? Miss Barry is my patient. Her welfare is my concern. I'm not good for it, huh? I think you ought to leave at once. (laughs) I'm sorry. I was only trying to relieve a delicate situation. Miss Barry and Mr. Brooks are engaged to be married. I read that in Paul Palmer's column a year ago. They should be married, Mr. Winslow. But as long as you're in the picture... Stop right there, pal. If Linda wants to wash me out, she can do it any time. Well... The fact is, she wants me in. So, uh, that's where I stay. Would you marry her? (laughs) You won't. You don't love her. Well, I'm not exactly indifferent to her charms, Professor. She has a lot of money. Uh, You catch on fast, don't you? Suppose I were to tell her that. You want to live, don't you? Mr. Winslow, are you... You want to go right on psychologizing dames for big fat fees? You can't do that when you're dead. You're not threatening me, young man. I know Miss Barry has given you money. And I know that she's made you the beneficiary of one of her largest life insurance policies. You know a lot, pal. I also know that you've been poisoning her mind against Mr. Brooks. But you'll never get another chance. When I get through telling Miss Barry the truth about you... Nice speech, Professor. Now take a deep breath. What? Hold it. Hold it. It might have to last you a lifetime. Here's your room, Toby. Good night. I'll see you in the morning. Paul, I don't know why I listen to you. 
After what Linda said and did to me tonight... She's a crackpot, but she's loaded with material. At least two columns out of one weekend. All right. But I don't like the idea of sleeping in her house. <laughs> Good night, sweetheart. Pleasant dreams. Who's there? It's me, Paul. Let me in. Well, what's the matter to you? Don't ask me now. Just let me in. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Uh, I'll get in my bathroom. Would you please hurry? I'm doing the best I can. Even getting into a bathrobe takes time. All right. Oh, Paul, darling. What's the matter? I had the most awful dream. What? I dreamed I was Cupid riding a black horse. Toby, do you realize it's only five o'clock in the morning? I couldn't sleep a wink after that. Every time I closed my eyes, there was that black horse and Linda. Oh, my aching life. It was terrible. I was sitting on the horse and I kept shooting arrows into her heart. Yeah, yeah. Poisoned arrows. Every time I took one out of the quiver, I dipped it into a bottle of cyanide that was tied around the horse's neck. Go, go back to bed, sugar. What you need is some sleep. But I can't. Darling. Oh, I... you've got to help me. <sighs> Let's go down to the living room. But, honey, why? That's where the dream took place. You expect to find a black horse down there? I don't know what I expect to find. But if you don't come with me... Get that look out of your eyes, Angel. Paul, I'm desperate. I've never been so upset before. Now, take my arm, Cupid. We're off to catch a dream. I wouldn't bother you ordinarily. <laughs> Sometimes I wish you would. A hunting we will go. A hunting we will go. Uh, watch your step the stairs. Thanks. If I could only be as calm as you. My arm would feel fine. Hmm? You're digging your nails into it, oh. and it's not even responsible for your dream. I'm sorry. Uh, I'll bet you are. But I am. You never like this arm anyway. Now, tell me the truth. Paul, that light. Where? Under the living room door. Okay, okay. So you're crazy about my arm. Stay here. Oh. Do you want to get knocked down by a horse? I'm going with you. <gasps> Good Lord. Linda. On the floor. With an arrow in her chest. <laughs> I killed her, Paul. Don't try to tell me I didn't. You didn't. Oh, what's the use? You'd say anything to make me feel good. Now, listen, honey. I'm a killer, and no amount of coaxing is going to convince me that I'm not. But dreams don't make murderers. How do you know I was dreaming? You said so. Maybe that's what I thought, but actually... Goodbye, Paul. It's been nice knowing you. Where are you going? The police will have to know about this, and I'm going to phone them. No, you're not. Put it down, Toby. I've got to give myself up. Okay, then I'll put it down. Oh. <laughs> Sorry. Your hand was in the way. Now, you'll do me one favor. Don't tell anyone about your dream. We're going to have the police in on this, aren't we? Sure, but not until I've got you straightened out. Come on. Where? Out for a walk. Let somebody else find Huh? Ah, oh, Professor Caldwell. A bright and early, aren't we? I always say there's nothing like the country air to... Good heavens. Behind you, Miss Barry. We found her that way. An arrow in her chest. Hi. Her pulse... Mr. Palmer, do you realize she's been murdered? I'm beginning to. Who did this? We don't know. I did, Professor. Toby, you, Miss Randolph. You'd better send for the police. I'll tell them everything. Well, as long as you've gone this far, why not tell it to Professor Caldwell? He's a psychologist. Is this a problem in psychology? She had a dream. It was more than that, Paul. I saw the whole thing. The living room, Linda, and I was shooting arrows into her heart. But you were riding on a black horse. Professor, do you see a black horse in this room? Very, very interesting. She was also dressed up as Cupid. She was? Forget it. Hmm. Miss Randolph, you had a dream in which you saw yourself as Cupid murdering Miss Barry? So I thought. But there was no romantic conflict between you and Miss Barry? You said there wasn't. Toby, for Pete's sake. Oh, let her talk, Mr. Palmer. She'll hang herself. Well, we'll see about that. Go on, Miss Randolph. Last night, Linda accused me of trying to take Wally Brooks away from her. We had a hair-pulling match. Amazing. The most unusual dream coincidence I've ever heard of. Professor... Now don't be alarmed, Mr. Palmer. This young lady is quite innocent. You mean it couldn't have happened as I told it? It's certainly not. You're not Cupid and there's no horse. But... Yes? Well, on the other hand, Miss Barry is dead. There is an arrow through her heart. This young lady is quite innocent. You mean it couldn't have happened as I told it? It's certainly not. You're not Cupid and there's no horse. But... Yes? Well, on the other hand, Miss 
Barry is dead, there is an arrow through her heart. That can only mean that if you're guilty, Miss Randolph, then you must be a somnambulist. Oh, good Lord. But now, Toby. Paul, as a child, I used to walk in my sleep regularly. You don't care what you do to yourself. Listen, Professor, I've got an idea. I'm afraid we need one, Mr. Palmer. If you hypnotize Toby, we could really find out what she did last night, couldn't we? We could. All right. Then hypnotize. Sit down, Toby. We're going to work. But, Paul, I told you. I want to know the truth. And I've got it. You mean I don't have to be hypnotized? No. All you've got to do is remember what happened after Linda pulled your hair last night. She... She... What you told me just before you went to your room. Wally said he was through, and she... Of course! She accused Wally of forging her name to checks. Mr. Palmer, do you realize what you're saying? I'm saying what Toby said Linda said. And she was there. Come on. Well, ask Wally. Don't, uh, knock yourselves out, Kitty. Sam. Yeah. I'll bet she never expected to die that way off stage. How long have you been here, Sam? Not long enough to embarrass anybody. Why? What made you come down? It's only six o'clock. I get restless sometimes. Why? You've got a reputation for waking up with a dinner bell. Oh, you think it was me, huh? It could have been, Mr. Winslow. Uh, we're going to hear from the professor. Uh, Mr. Palmer, this man is the beneficiary of a $50,000 insurance policy taken out by Miss Barry. Well, I'll be... Not anymore, Toby. Okay, Sam. You tell me. I uh, had influence with the babe. I was her type. That's not telling me, pal. She hired me to find out where a doe was going. Checks she didn't remember signing. Then she took a shine to me. What was I going to do? Now, listen, That's Sam. exactly what I did. After I found out who was signing those checks with Linda's Johanna Hancock. It was her boyfriend, Wally Brooks. I know all about that. Great. Now, here's something you don't know. Where's Wally? What? His room's next to mine. I heard him going out about ten minutes ago. That's what woke me up. That's ridiculous. Mr. Brooks has a car in the garage, and we heard no car. There it is, Professor. <laughs> well, what do you say, Paul? Well, send for the police. They know all the answers. Oh, well, how about some breakfast, Toby? No, thanks, Paul. It'll be an hour before we hit New York, and I... Oh, look, there's a nice quiet place just around the next intersection. The food's good. I don't feel like eating, Paul. What's the matter with you? Why didn't you let me tell the police about my dream? Oh, it's that dream again. I killed Linda. Listen, honey, the police know how to analyze a crime, and they suspect Wallace. Just because he disappeared. He didn't take a thing that belonged to him, not even his socks. It doesn't prove he's a murderer. He's been forging Linda's name to checks, and she found him out. He wouldn't have killed her for that. She was ready to marry now, him. Now, listen, honey. I won't. Wally's not a killer. And I don't believe he was ever a thief. But the police found the checks. Oh, what's the use? You've made up your mind to cheat the law, and you don't care who dies, as long as it isn't me. You don't know what you're talking about. And I'm going to prove it once and for all. If you only could. We'll turn around, and then we'll hit right for police headquarters. Why? In your dream, Cupid was dipping the arrows into a bottle of cyanide. Yes. So far, there's been no mention of cyanide, but the police are the coroner. I'm going to insist on a lab test of the arrow point. Fair enough. Yeah. But while that's being done, Angel, you keep your mouth shut about that dream. Understand? That's a very unusual request, Mr. Palmer. I'm an unusual guy, Captain. You? You read my column? Sometimes. Then you want to know how I work. I do a thorough job on everything and everybody. You? Captain, it wouldn't take much of your time to do a lab test on that arrow. Please. Why should you be interested, Miss Randolph? I... Well, you see... Frankly, I don't. Paul, I'm going to tell him. Toby. I can't live with it anymore. I've got to talk. You've done too much already. Let's get out of here. Now, wait a minute. She's got to talk, and I'm here to listen. Go ahead, lady. I think I killed Linda Barry. Uh-huh. Paul and Professor Caldwell have been trying to tell me I couldn't have done it. But I know different. Sure. Here's a pencil and some paper. You write it down. Nothing doing, Captain. Now, you stay out of this, Mr. Palmer. But you don't understand. You can't take a confession from her. You wait outside. Oh, for Pete's sake, why don't you listen? Outside, mister. All right. But you'll never convict her. She claims there was cyanide on the tip of the arrow. There was. What? Here's the coroner's report. You want to read it? Good Lord, but she only dreamed about it. Now, listen, you. If you make one more attempt to influence this lady, I'll... I've got to use that phone. Are you getting out of here? Yes, yes, but let me call Professor Caldwell, the psychologist. He's an expert on dreams. Call him from the other room. Okay. But hold up that confession until he gets here, will you? The other room, mister. Now, here's the door. <laughs> Thanks for the assist, Captain. I never would have made it without your help. Her 
hurry up, hurry up. Hello? Now, Professor Caldwell. Yes? This is Paul Palmer. Oh, Mr. Palmer, I'm so glad you phoned. How soon can you get here? No, I can't. I want you but to... you must. Mr. Brooks came in a few minutes ago. What? And without a word of warning, he began to beat up Mr. Winslow. If you don't get out here as soon as you can, there'll be another murder in this house. Wally, he came back. Please, Mr. Palmer, as soon as you can. It'll take me at least 15 minutes. That won't do any good. It'll have to. Now, listen, Professor. Don't let Wally get away. I wanted to meet a certain captain of the police with a first-hand story of why he disappeared. Is that you, Mr. Palmer? It's me, Professor. Where's Wally? You said you'd be here in 15 minutes. It's more than half an hour since you uh, I had a flat. Where's Wally Brooks? We took him up to his room about a half an hour ago. You... You took him up. He means we dragged him up. Sam, what are you doing on your feet? <laughs> but, Professor, you told me... It was me... phenomenal, Mr. Palmer. I went back to the living room after I spoke to you, and there was... I, I couldn't believe it. Yeah, I was standing, and Wally wasn't. But I thought that So he... it seemed, pal. He took me by surprise, but all I had to get over was one punch. And when that was settled... Okay, let's go up and have a talk with him. If he's conscious. Ah, uh-huh, Sam, don't flatter yourself. You don't hit that hard. <laughs> My pal. Not by any stretch of the imagination. Oh. Uh, Professor, would you say that Sam is human? Definitely not. A species of two-legged animal. If I had my way, I... Which you haven't. Okay, we'll settle this later. Uh, listen, Wally. Hey, what do you know? The guy came, too. Not so as you can notice it. Well, we left him on the bed. If he didn't come, too, how'd he get in that chair? Come here, Professor. What seems to be wrong, Mr. Palmer? Check him. I've got an idea. He's Dead? Dead? Mr. Winslow. Now don't look at me. I couldn't have killed him with one punch. I don't hit that hard. He is dead, Mr. Palmer. Now, wait a minute. Shut up, Sam. How can a guy tell without a stethoscope? Mr. Brooks has no pulse, and there's no action in his heart that I can hear. Let's call a doctor. I am a doctor, Mr. Winslow. My specialty happens to be psychology, but that doesn't mean that I... Never mind that, Professor. I know what killed Wally. What's that? Poison. From this tiny bottle. Bottle? But I I don't see... He's clutching it in his hand and... (laughs) He's got a grip on it I can't break. Leave him alone, pal. The guy committed suicide. I want the cops to find that bottle in his hand. But I've got to know whether it contains cyanide. (sighs) Come on, Professor. You should know how to flex muscles. I'm afraid it would be impossible in this case, Mr. Palmer. Why? Obviously, rigor mortis is set in. I'm not giving up. If that bottle contains cyanide, then... What would you say, Professor? Rigor mortis, Mr. Palmer. The rigidity of the muscles that occurs after death. Yeah. Sam, close that door. What's the idea? Close it. I want to ask the professor a few questions with no way out. Okay. You've got me guessing, pal. Mr. Palmer, what is the meaning of this? I'll let you know, Professor. Sam, get on that phone. Call the Medical Society of New York. What? Don't look so dumb. Ask them if they got a member by the name of Professor Caldwell. Uh, what's your name, Professor? You're very clever, Mr. Palmer. It's about time. <laughs> but it didn't take you long to get that gun out of your pocket, did it? Does it matter? Why did you kill Linda? She made a startling discovery. The checks were forged? They weren't forged, Mr. Palmer. Now, look. Oh, no. No, I see what you mean. (laughs) She signed them herself while she was under your influence. What goes with this guy? An electric chair, Sam. He's a phony psychologist, and Linda was one of his patients. Each time she came to his office, he got her just in the right mood to be hypnotized. Then he'd tell her to write a check and sign it. Uh, they were all made out to cash, weren't they, Professor? Of course. And she cast them for me while she was in that, uh, right mood. But why did you kill her? I told you. Can't you figure it out, pal? She accused Wally. I suppose she had the guy arrested. You think DA is a dumb? No. They investigate everybody. And what did they find out? This guy's a phony doctor. Yeah. Remind me to like you the next time we meet. Thanks. Now, Professor, about Toby... You hypnotized her, too, and you induced her to have that dream. (laughs) Why? The young lady was a perfect subject after her quarrel with Miss Barry. But how did you get to her? I took her to the door of the room and I saw her go in. She came out later. The poor child was very disturbed. Naturally, she needed attention. Dirty hypocrite. Take it easy, Paul. It's done. (laughs) Yeah. You, uh... You changed your mind about Toby, Professor, when Wally disappeared... When he came back, you set him up as the perfect suicide. It's quite simple. Such an easy way out. No trial, no investigation. The suspect committed suicide. Q-E-D. Q-E-D. Well, yeah. 
So that's why you tried to get rid of me, Professor. I think I'll go now, gentlemen. You didn't want a private detective around while you were fixing a murder and a framer. Goodbye, Mr. Winslow. He even tried to put the frame around me. You know, Professor, that makes me mad. Really? Would you like me to put you out of your misery? I'm standing here by the door, Professor. If you want to get out, you'll have to come through me. You insist on being a fool, don't you? No, Professor. Mr. Palmer. Present. You shouldn't have forgotten about me, not even for a minute. Bad psychology. Oh, Paul, I'll take the gun. I'll take it, Sam. One more twist. That's all mine. Now, Professor... I have nothing to say to you, Mr. Palmer. He doesn't like me, Sam. Oh, I'm sick about it. Do you think I ought to kill myself? You're a hard nut to crack, chum. Okay, you take one arm and I'll take the other. We'll give this guy a lift down to police headquarters that won't be exactly psychological. Hunting we will go. Hunting we will Paul. go. Yeah? Yes, Toby? How did you decide that Professor Caldwell was the murderer? He said Gregor Mortis. Yes, that's what you told me before, but how did you really decide? Well, he couldn't have been dead more than half an hour. Rigor mortis takes from six to eight hours to set in. Any doctor knows that. Any real doctor. But what made Wally so rigid? Hypnotism. Hmm? Did you ever see people hypnotized? Several times, but... Of course. Their bodies become so rigid they couldn't even be bent. There you have it. Thanks, I don't want it. Death doesn't relax those muscles. They stay that way. I still don't want it. Mm. You're hard to please, young lady. <laughs> what do you want? Would you really like to know? Sure. I want something to eat. I'm hungry. And so closes tonight's story... Cupid Can Be Deadly. Stedman Coles wrote the radio script. Roger Bauer produced and directed. Sidney Smith played the part of Paul Palmer. Virginia Dwyer was Toby Randolph. Cameron Prudhomme was Professor Caldwell. Helen Shields played Linda Barry. Larry Haynes was Sam Winslow. And Sherling Oliver was heard as Wally Brooks. This program came from New York. This is the last broadcast in the current Crime Club series. This is the world's largest network serving more than 450 radio stations, the Mutual Broadcasting System.